Well, thank you, uh, Christina. Okay, so first thing I need to explain is the title for my talk, and uh, three reasons for it. Uh, the day that uh, Christina called me uh, that for this particular talk, and uh, just the night before, I had uh, watched a movie, and uh, some of you may remember this. This is uh, Dead Poet Society. This was back in uh, late 80s. Uh, Robin Williams, uh, the character that he's playing in that uh, Keating uh, is talking to his class and he says uh, medicine, law, business, engineering, these are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. But poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. So that night <laughs> I was, <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about engineering and romance, and uh, <laughs> so that was one part. Then I started thinking about this part here, and this is the time. You know, we sleep usually for about eight hours. The remaining 16 hours, we spend eight hours in the office, quite often about an hour to go to work, an hour to come back, and still thinking about work. So actually about 63% of your waking hours you are spending on work-related activities. This is that second partner that you chose at some point in your life and it's going to stay with you. So you are actually spending a lot of time with this partner. Okay, that's the second partner. The third one is, you already saw this slide, <laughs> is a frequently asked question for me. Uh, the last couple of years, I meet people, and even here, I counted at least 10 times here at the IFT meeting. Uh, hey, Paul, when are you going to retire? <laughs> so, one of the things I find is that getting to my stage right now, my hindsight is getting better and better. Uh, so, I can look back and really think about, you know, how things went. And one question that comes up quite often is, did I have a successful relationship in this romance that I had? with this field. And that immediately then raises the question, what do we mean by success? And that's the theme that I like to explore today. And uh, I'm going to use some references and so on, and I'm going to put them out later on for you. Uh, but that's the, the key word that I like to work with you today. So I looked up in Webster, and it says attainment of wealth, position, honors. Well, when I've asked some of my own students and others, Wealth doesn't come in the definition of success. Uh, now, of course, if I talk to the uh, hedge fund managers, probably wealth may be number one, but not for others. You need, of course, money for comfort, security, and so on. But there are a lot of other things that are metrics for success. We had a uh, board of uh, advisors to our department a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we asked a question about when you are hiring uh, our graduates, what do you seek in them so that they are going to be successful in your, in your uh, company and so on. And these were some of the things that they wrote down, they mentioned and I wrote it down. Love to learn, they want to see that in that individual they are hiring. Love to discuss and challenge and grow in that organization. Passionate, this word kept coming again and again. They want to see the person to be passionate about that field that person has chosen. Okay, so success. This is something that turns out to be more of a personal statement. I'm sure that if we had some time, I would give you a little piece of paper. I'd like you to write it down. Think about what do you think about success in a career. But I'm going to give you a couple of definitions as we go through uh, the remaining minutes I have. Okay, romance with food engineering. It has to start somewhere, right? So there is a beginning. <laughs> okay, I know exactly the day, the moment when my romance started and I, 
I'm quite sure you have the same, whether it's food science, food technology, food engineering. There was a day, there was a time when you first heard the word food science, food technology, food engineering. It's etched in your memory and you want to keep it because that's really a treasure moment. For me, I was in India. I was actually in my second year at that time in college. Uh, and uh, I had gotten admission in the United States as a transfer student. And uh, the field was nuclear engineering. This is mid-60s. But nuclear engineering was the engineering, you know, really something that you could work in. And I was an editor for a, a student newsletter. And there was a visiting professor from uh, Michigan State University, uh, Dr. Arthur Farrell, who was visiting. And I went and uh, did an interview. And after the interview, he asked me, what are you planning to do? And I told him, I, you know, I was quite excited. I said, I'm going to the United States for nuclear engineering. And he sat me down, and we actually talked for the next about an hour or so. And he talked to me about food engineering. That's the first time I heard food engineering, the word, and what it brings in terms of a field. And that's what triggered me on to food engineering. And I hope you have same stories, and I would love to hear your stories. And I hope at IFT we have occasions where we can share those stories because I think they are so important. Okay, so I'm going to give you about three references. And uh, this one is a book, Crafting a Successful Career. I'll put this name, uh, title again later on. It's written by uh, uh, Dick Cuffell, who uh, uh, retired from General Mills after 35 years in uh, product development. And after his retirement, he started writing. And uh, this was one of his uh, bestsellers. And in that, he talks about what makes a successful career. And uh, I'm going to just list some of these items. We'll discuss just a few because of the limitation of time. But again, you want to read this book because, again, it relates to food. It's in our business. So it's got some really excellent examples. So what he says is you need to define success. You've got to have a statement for yourself. And I'm talking especially for those who are beginning their careers, let's say, in the food area. Get a job. That's important uh, uh, in that area. Find a mentor in that organization that you are joining. Become the best technical person you can be. That's important. Create your network. Sponsorship. Learn to gen generate influence in your work environment and perform well. And then lastly, put together plan B and C. <laughs> okay. As I said, I will just mention a few. Again, we have a limitation of time. So uh, define success. So how do we define success? So I'll give you the first definition. And uh, I'd like to talk about John Wooden just for a minute. I assume that there are people here who know John Wooden. Uh, some may not. But uh, John Wooden passed away two years ago at the age of 99. Uh, he was the uh, UCLA basketball coach. And uh, from 65 to 75, to, uh, in 12-year period, uh, the UCLA basketball team, they won 10 NCAA championships. And uh, he wrote, uh, I think there are three or four books, and uh, this is his definition. Well, let's look at that. Success is a peace of mind which is a direct result of self-satisfaction in knowing you made the effort to become the best you are capable of becoming. That's the definition of success, according to Wooden. Success is a result, okay? It's a result of activities that you're involved in. It's a peace of mind is from that self-satisfaction. And that self-satisfaction is a result of controllable factors, factors that you can control. And that's extremely important. You don't want to be led by other controlling factors where you have no control because that's what leads to then failures and so on. So it's very important that you have those in mind. Okay, become the best technical person you can be. Uh, Malcolm Galdwell has written books, uh, Tipping Point and Outliers. In Outliers, he talks about the people at the very top don't work just harder or even much harder than any, everyone else. They work much, much harder. And he gives examples of uh, Bill Gates, of Beatles, and some of these folks who have done extremely well, how did they do that well? And he actually comes up with a number, 10,000 hours. Those who have read Outliers will know that. 
you need to spend 10,000 hours in a field, you will get very good. Now, what is 10,000 hours? That's three years, 10 hours a day you are working. Okay, now that then raises the question, do I have the time to work that hard? Because what you are willing to sacrifice to be successful and what you are not willing to sacrifice, uh, according to Stephen Kofi. So it's a balance. And you have to strike that balance. That is in your control. Okay. In terms of working hard, uh, you all saw this back in 2009 when a plane landed in Hudson River and uh, Sullenberger was the pilot. And a lot of people said, oh, he was just lucky. No, you should look at his resume. He graduated at top of his aviator class in the Air Force Academy. He flew F-4s before he got to U.S. Airways. He had 29 years of experience. He mastered the skills as glider landings. He worked with how pilots and crew react in moment of crisis. He spent years for preparing for an event that he doesn't want to happen, but he was prepared for that. So there is that work that needs to go in to be successful, and he did succeed. In fact, when all those people came out, he went, walked down the aisle twice to make sure there was no one hiding in there, or not hiding, but, you know, in, in the plane, okay? Could be hiding because the person is scared or something. So you just want to make sure everybody's out. So, lady luck favors the well-prepared, and that's important in any field, any area that you're working in. Okay, networking. We are here networking, and here's a statement that we often see. It's not what you know, but who you know that makes a difference. Now, sometimes that statement doesn't sound right. Well, maybe I don't really need to know anything. I just got to know some people. No, that's not the point. You need to know your field. But it's equally important to know people. The first time I attended IFT meeting was 75 or 74, somewhere, New Orleans. And I remember in the mixer, walking from one side to the other, I knew only five people. My major professor and I think three other or four other students. I didn't know anybody. But I made it a point that I'll at least get to know maybe five or six people. The next year around, I made, made sure that I met more people, and so on. And from there, the network grew. And that is extremely important. So those of you who are attending for the first time IFT meeting, make sure you make new friends here, get to know more people here, and that's how your network expands. How much? A couple, just fine. I'm finishing. Okay, mentoring. We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. Okay, so mentoring goes both ways. As a professor, I've been really lucky in being able to mentor students, but it's also important that you, as when you join a company and so on, you locate a mentor for yourself who is going to lead you through that, whether that's a corporation or a small company or whatever. Okay, what if this went away? This is a job. Your corporation just got purchased. Every working, working person needs a plan B. That's a realistic look while you have a current job in stable situation. That's most important. You don't start looking for that plan B when you have lost the job. This is when you have the job. You have to look at your area of uh, uh, you know, expertise, and that's where lifelong learning becomes extremely important. Okay, this statement is going to get me in trouble, and, but this comes from a former president, Jimmy Carter. I have looked on many women with lust. I have committed adultery in my heart many times. God knows I will do this and forgive me. Okay, he made that statement a few years ago. So I was thinking, well, how does that relate to us? And that is, look outside the box. <laughs> okay, when you are in food engineering, you got to look outside. There are a lot of things happening right at the boundary. And you need to make sure that you, uh, you know, prepare yourself for that cutting edge work. Okay, just last two slides. Uh, John Wooden said, big things are accomplished only through perfection of minor details. And uh, for that, I suggest that and read uh, Steve Jobs' book, because I think that gives you a lot of good ideas on that. And the last definition I give you of success, this is from Dick Cuffell from his book, that success is using my abilities the best I can do whatever I set out to do within the priorities I've set for my life. Okay, so and these are the references, and thank you very much for your time.